Imam Ghazali, Bridging Reason and Revelation in the Pursuit of Truth In the chronicles of Islamic history, few figures stand as tall as Imam Ghazali, a towering intellect whose life and work have left an indelible mark on the world. Born into an era of profound philosophical and theological inquiry, Ghazali's journey from a young scholar in the heartlands of Persia to one of the most revered spiritual and intellectual authorities in the Muslim world is a testament to the transformative power of knowledge and inner reflection. His tireless pursuit of truth, bridging the realms of reason and revelation, not only reshaped the course of Islamic thought, but also laid the groundwork for a holistic understanding of the human experience, one that continues to resonate in our quest for meaning and purpose today. Abu Hamid Muhammad ibn Muhammad al-Ghazali, commonly known as Imam Ghazali, stands as one of the most influential Muslim scholars in Islamic history. Born in 1058 CE in the town of Tus, located in present-day Iran, Imam Ghazali's contributions to philosophy, theology, and Sufism have left an indelible mark on the intellectual landscape of the Islamic world. His life and works not only reshaped Islamic thought, but also provided a bridge between the classical traditions of the past and the evolving intellectual currents of his time, which continue to resonate in contemporary discussions on science and philosophy. Imam Ghazali's early life was marked by both promise and tragedy. He lost his father at a young age, and his upbringing was entrusted to a close family friend who was a Sufi. This early exposure to spirituality would later play a significant role in shaping Ghazali's approach to theology and philosophy. Recognizing his prodigious intellect, his guardian ensured that Ghazali received an excellent education. He began his studies in Tus, where he learned the basics of Islamic jurisprudence and theology. Ghazali's pursuit of knowledge took him to the great centers of learning in the Islamic world. His first major move was to Jurjan where he studied under the renowned scholar Imam al-Juwaini, also known as Imam al-Haramain, who was one of the foremost theologians of his time. Under Imam al-Juwaini's tutelage, Ghazali mastered a wide array of subjects including Islamic jurisprudence, fiqh, theology, kalam, logic, and philosophy. His brilliance did not go unnoticed and he quickly gained a reputation as a scholar of extraordinary depth and insight. After the death of Imam al-Juwaini, Ghazali was invited to the Nizamiya College in Baghdad by Nizam al-Mulk, the powerful vizier of the Seljuk Empire. At the time, the Nizamiya College was the most prestigious institution of higher learning in the Muslim world and Ghazali's appointment as a professor, there was a testament to his intellectual stature. His lectures attracted students from all over the Islamic world, and he became known as Hujat al-Islam, or the proof of Islam, for his ability to articulate and defend Islamic orthodoxy against the philosophical challenges of his day. Despite his success, Ghazali was not content with merely being a scholar in the traditional sense. He was increasingly troubled by the contradictions he perceived between the theoretical knowledge he possessed and the spiritual fulfillment he sought. This internal crisis culminated in a dramatic turning point in his life in 1095 CE. Ghazali abandoned his position at the Nizamiya College, left Baghdad, and embarked on a journey of spiritual self-discovery. For over a decade, he traveled across the Islamic world visiting holy sites, studying under various Sufi masters, and engaging in deep contemplation and meditation. During this period, Ghazali produced some of his most profound works, including his magnum opus, Ihya Ulum al-Din, The Revival of the Religious Sciences. This work is a comprehensive synthesis of Islamic teachings, encompassing jurisprudence, theology, ethics, and spirituality. In it, Ghazali emphasized the importance of inner transformation and the cultivation of the heart as the foundation of religious practice. He argued that mere outward adherence to religious rituals was insufficient for true piety. Rather, one must also strive for sincerity, humility, 
and a deep awareness of God. Ghazali's philosophy was not limited to theology and spirituality. He also engaged deeply with the philosophical and scientific ideas of his time. His engagement with philosophy is perhaps best exemplified by his work Tahafut al falasifa The Incoherence of the Philosophers, in which he critically examined the ideas of Muslim philosophers such as Avicenna, Ibn Sina, and Al-Farabi, who were heavily influenced by Greek philosophy, particularly the works of Aristotle and Plato. Ghazali did not reject philosophy outright, but was critical of what he saw as the over-reliance on rationalism and the neglect of spiritual and metaphysical dimensions of reality. In Tahafut al falasifa he argued that reason alone could not lead to ultimate truth, as it was limited and prone to error. Instead, he advocated for a balance between reason and revelation, where reason is used to understand the world, but revelation provides the ultimate guidance for living a righteous life. Ghazali's critique of philosophy had a profound impact on the development of Islamic thought. His work led to a decline in the influence of Greek philosophy in the Islamic world and a shift towards a more theology-centered approach to knowledge. However, his critiques were not meant to dismiss the value of scientific inquiry. Rather, Ghazali sought to ensure that science and philosophy were grounded in a spiritual and ethical framework, preventing them from leading people away from the truths of faith. In the realm of science, Ghazali's contributions are often viewed through the lens of his philosophical and theological critiques. His emphasis on causality and his argument that natural laws are not independent entities but are sustained by the will of God had significant implications for the development of science in the Islamic world. While some have argued that this view stifled scientific progress by discouraging inquiry into natural causes, Others contend that it encouraged a view of the universe as a coherent, purposeful creation that could be studied and understood as a manifestation of divine wisdom. Ghazali's influence extended beyond the Islamic world, particularly through his works that were translated into Latin and studied by medieval European scholars. His ideas contributed to the intellectual discourse in Europe during the Middle Ages, particularly in the areas of ethics, metaphysics, and the philosophy of religion. The tension he highlighted between faith and reason became a central theme in Western philosophical debates, influencing thinkers such as Thomas Aquinas and others in the scholastic tradition. The relevance of Imam Ghazali's thought in contemporary times, especially in relation to scientific development, lies in his approach to integrating different forms of knowledge. In an era where science and religion are often seen as opposing forces, Ghazali's work offers a model for reconciling these two domains. His insistence on the importance of both reason and revelation challenges the modern dichotomy between science and faith, suggesting that they can complement each other rather than being mutually exclusive. Ghazali's critique of the philosophers also raises important questions about the limits of scientific inquiry. His argument that reason has its limitations and that there are aspects of reality that transcend rational understanding is particularly relevant in the face of the complex ethical dilemmas posed by modern science and technology. Issues such as genetic engineering, artificial intelligence, and environmental degradation require not only technical solutions but also a moral and spiritual framework to guide their development and application. Ghazali's emphasis on the ethical dimensions of knowledge reminds us that scientific progress must be aligned with the broader goals of human well-being and the preservation of the natural world. Moreover, Ghazali's work on the revival of religious sciences highlights the importance of holistic education that nurtures both the mind and the soul. In a world where education is often narrowly focused on technical skills and measurable outcomes, Ghazali's vision of education as a means of moral and spiritual development offers a valuable corrective. His approach encourages a broader view of knowledge that includes not only intellectual achievements, but also the cultivation of virtues such as humility, compassion, and integrity.
In conclusion, Imam Ghazali's life and works remain profoundly relevant to the contemporary world. His integration of diverse fields of knowledge, his critique of the limitations of reason, and his emphasis on the ethical dimensions of science and philosophy provide valuable insights for addressing the challenges of our time. Ghazali's thought encourages a balanced approach to knowledge that honors both the intellectual and spiritual aspects of human existence, offering a vision of harmony between science, philosophy, and religion that continues to inspire scholars and thinkers across the world.